Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you three different ways to use leftover bananas. Now, I personally feel like I always have those, you know, one to three bananas that I just can't get to in time and they start to get brown and spotty. And that doesn't mean that we have to throw them away. I'm pretty sure all of us are familiar uh, with ways to use leftover overripe bananas. The good thing about bananas though is that the more brown they get, the sweeter and softer they get because the sugars are breaking down inside of them. So that makes them the perfect ingredient for baked goods because they add natural sweetness and a ton of nutrition. And it also means we don't have to add as much sugar in the recipe for it to be as delicious. So in this video, I'm going to show you three vegan and gluten-free recipes that use leftover bananas. We're going to be making some banana oatmeal breakfast cookies, some chocolate banana muffins, and then last but not least, the classic banana bread. So without further ado, let's get on to the recipes. First up, we're going to be making some banana oatmeal breakfast cookies. This recipe is great for meal prep because the cookies travel well, but it's also great for just hanging out at home and want some cookies for breakfast. So to start out, we're going to mash our banana. Um, as you'll see, the bananas get progressively more ripe throughout this video, but as long as there are a few brown spots, it is okay for all these recipes. So you just need one banana for this recipe. You're going to mash it up with a fork until it's nice and smooth and almost gets glossy when you know it's well mixed, as you can kind of see here. So then from there, we're going to add in some applesauce for some moisture, some rolled oats for texture, some oat flour to help hold things together, and then we're also going to add in some baking powder, salt, and cinnamon. Then you can just use a fork or a spatula to mix everything together. It's going to look a little bit dry at first, but as you mash the mixture into the banana, everything will become moist. We want more of a thick cookie dough uh, than a runny muffin or bread batter. So once everything is even, you're going to add in some nuts. I'm using walnuts here because I think the flavor profile goes really well with bananas, but you could also use almonds or pumpkin seeds if you have a nut allergy. But once those are folded into the batter, you're going to form six even cookies. I'm using a three tablespoon size cookie scoop because it makes the perfect amount of cookies, but you can also just use a regular tablespoon or a spoon, whatever you want. Just put those on a baking tray. And then you're going to use a slightly moist hand to flatten out the cookie because they're not gonna spread out too much in the oven. And they're going to pop these babies into the oven for 15 minutes. The bottoms are gonna get nice and golden brown. That's when you'll know they're done. And then that's it. I really like these. They have a hearty texture, so they're not totally fluffy or totally chewy. Kind of like a soft granola bar meets cookie kind of thing, but they're nice and hearty. A great way to start the day, especially dunked in a cup of coffee or something. But you know, you do you. Have it with tea, have it without anything. Up to you. Next up, we're going to be making some chocolate banana muffins. And you know, any excuse to have chocolate for breakfast is a good excuse for me. So we're going to start out by mixing our dry ingredients together. We're going to use some oat flour. I love using oat flour because it's cheap and accessible and you can just make it in your blender. And then for our chocolate, we're going to be using cacao powder here, but you could also use cocoa powder. We're also going to add in some baking powder and some baking soda, and last but not least, a little bit of salt. Then you're just going to take a whisk and mix or whisk everything together until it's evenly incorporated and cacao powder can clump sometimes, so just make sure there aren't any big chunks of that. And then we're gonna work on our wet ingredients. So here I have some slightly more ripe bananas. These I think are ideal for me um, for this recipe, but you can go a little bit further if you want. So then you're just going to peel each banana, plop it into the bowl, and then just like before, you're going to use a fork to mash everything up. As the bananas get softer, it's kind of hard to break them into chunks. Just know that's totally okay. And once the bananas start to look glossy again, you know you're good. So we're going to add in some coconut sugar and some nut butter. I'm using almond butter here, but if you wanted to make these chocolate peanut butter muffins, you could use peanut butter. You could also use sunflower seed butter or tahini if you have a nut allergy. And then I'm adding a flaxseed here, but actually just disregard that because I tested this recipe later and it's better without it. Um, and then last but not least, we're going to add in some plant-based milk just to help everything dissolve. So you're going to mix this together. Once everything is evenly incorporated, a few banana chunks are fine. We're going to add that into the center of the dry ingredient. So use a spatula to get everything in there and then just mix it all together until you get a nice batter. And these muffins are going to have a little bit of a thicker batter. That's totally okay. It just helps it rise more in the oven. I find when you use a super runny batter in vegan baking, it doesn't really firm up as much. So then you're going to scoop your muffin batter out and you can put it in a greased or lined muffin tin. And with muffins, you wanna fill them about three fourths of the way full. Otherwise they'll spill over the top and get flat on top instead of a nice domed peak. And then here I'm just topping them with a few chocolate chips. That's totally optional. You can definitely leave them out, but I like to put them in 
who wants to not eat chocolate chips for breakfast? But this is what they look like once they come out of the oven. You're gonna let them sit in the tray for a few minutes just to set, and then you can carefully remove them and let them cool completely on a baking rack before enjoying them. And once they're cool, all their crumb structure will be formed, so you are able to enjoy them however you please. I just wanted to show you here when you rip them in half, they're nice and fluffy on the inside. If you wanted to fold some chocolate chips into the batter too, you could. I just wasn't sure if that qualified as a breakfast muffin or a dessert. But moving on, last but not least, we're going to be making some vegan banana bread. I've shared this recipe with you guys before. It's one of the classic ones on my blog, but I feel like what's a leftover banana video without a banana bread recipe? So here I'm making a flax egg by mixing some ground flax with some water and then setting it aside to thicken. And then we're going to move on to mashing our bananas. These bananas are totally brown or some people would say black. And this is actually really good for banana bread too because these bananas are super, super sweet, which means as I said in the intro, we don't need to add as much sugar. So I just wanna say, as long as your bananas are moldy, it's never too late to use your bananas. So again, we're mashing them, we're mixing them, we're waiting until they're glossy, slightly chunky, and then we're going to add in some coconut sugar and some nut butter again. Here, I'm also using almond butter, but you could use cashew butter, peanut butter, any of the other nut butters I mentioned earlier in the video. You do you. Then we're going to add some vanilla extract and some apple cider vinegar. This is gonna react with the baking soda to help things rise. Then we're going to add our thickened flax egg and again, mix everything until it's nice and uniform. So, you know, you've seen this a few times, well, at least once. This is what it looks like. And then we're going to set that aside and whisk all of our dry ingredients together. So again, we're using oat flour as a base, but I also like to add in some rolled oats. I find that these add a hearty texture to the banana bread instead of just having it be one note. If you want to, you can substitute oat flour completely. Um, that's in the recipe notes that's linked in the blog post, but I like to add in the rolled oats. And then again, we're going to add in some baking powder, baking soda, and some salt to help things rise and to increase the depth of flavor. And then we're just going to whisk everything together again until everything is evenly incorporated. And then, like most baking recipes, we're going to add in the wet ingredients and fold everything together. So actually the reason why we mix the wet and dry ingredients separately first is so the sugar in the wet ingredients can completely dissolve and that way it just helps with the crumb structure and overall fluffiness of the bread. So again, this bread, dough, batter, whatever you call it, is going to be on a little bit of a thicker side, but once everything is evenly mixed, you can place it in a greased or lined bread tin. I like to use an eight inch tin. I find that it gives more height to the bread. Um, you can use a nine inch one, but it does end up being a little bit more flat. And then here, this is totally optional. If you have an extra banana that's not too overly ripe, you can cut it in half and put it on top. It's just kind of a fancy decoration. And then into the oven we go. And this is what it looks like once it comes out. The top will be a little bit firm and golden brown. So now we're going to remove the parchment paper or the banana bread from the baking tin and let it cool completely on the tray, again, to keep the height of it and the crumb structure. And then this is what it looks like once it's finished. You're free to slice it, serve it as desired. Um, the banana will dry out with time. So if you're planning on keeping this at room temperature, I would maybe suggest not doing that. You could top it with chocolate chips instead. Uh, but this is what the inside looks like. It's nice and hearty, but still nice and moist and tender and has a nice crumb. So my favorite way to serve this banana bread is warmed in the toaster oven or an air fryer and then topped with a little dollop of nut butter. Here I'm using peanut butter. Um, ooh, it would also be good. You know, I was just gonna say it would be good with chocolate, but I feel like I'm talking a lot about adding chocolate to things in this recipe video. But yeah, the nut butter, you're good to go. And I just wanted to end on this little glamour tear shot of the banana bread nut butter because it looks really good. Okay, bye. And those are the recipes for this video. So let me know in the comments below which one of these recipes you'd wanna make first. And also let me know your favorite way to use leftover overripe bananas. I obviously like to make all these recipes, but I also have a recipe for some banana almond pulp cookies on my blog. I also like to use mashed banana in my oatmeal or in banana pancakes. There are tons of ways to use banana. Generally speaking, it's actually a good applesauce substitute. Um, if a recipe calls for applesauce too. You can mash it up swap it out, you know. But if you wanna make any of these three recipes, as always, the full recipes are linked below, as well as Pinterest images, so if you want to go ahead and save them for later on that platform, you can do that as well. And that is pretty much it, so if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you wanna see more recipe videos like this, be sure to subscribe down below. And I always appreciate when you guys like my videos and leave a comment. It really means a lot to me, and I love getting, connect getting to connect with you that way. I'm more eloquent over text, obviously. Um, but I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.